All right, so in this video, I'll do some combo chart examples. So combo chart is when you combine two different type of charts together. Let's do some examples of that. So here we have some information, our leads year to year, and we also have conversions of those leads, how many leads we converted over time. So we can go ahead and create a combo chart out of this data. I'm gonna go ahead and hit insert chart and it comes out as a line chart so that's fine but we're going to change it so i'm going to scroll up instead of line i'm going to choose this combo chart so it's in the line section so combo chart so you can see how it converted this leads to a column chart and the second one is a line chart so you can choose what type of chart it's going to be by simply clicking on those series. So if I click on the bars right here, see as a type, I can go and change it from a column chart to a different type of chart. So if I wanted a line chart, I can do a line chart. If I want a column chart, I can do that. I can do stepped area chart. So you can change the chart type to whatever you want it to be. Well, not whatever you want it to be. You only have these four choices, but one of those. With combo charts, you also can move things to their own axis. So right now we're using this left axis to measure both the number of leads here and number of converted leads down here. If you want, you can click on any one of those series. So in this case, I'm clicking on the line chart and move it to its own axis from left axis. I'm gonna go to right axis and now it's on its own axis and the right axis represents our conversions over time, which is the red line and blue axis and the left axis is basically our leads over time. So that's a very basic example of a combo chart. Let's move on to something a little more interesting. So that's an actual versus projected data. This is gonna be a pretty basic combo chart again, but it will be a nice representation where you may want to use a combo chart when it's more meaningful and nicer looking, I guess. So we have some numbers that we've budgeted and we have some actual numbers that come in and we want to present on a chart that we can see what are the actual numbers and what was the budgeted number for that. I'm gonna go ahead and select this data, insert chart. And the first thing I'm going to do, I'm going to switch this, scroll higher, move this to a combo chart and this is what I have. So at this point, what I want to do, I want the actual numbers to look like actual numbers. So right now you can see how it took the actual, which is the red one and converted it to a line chart. So I'm going to click on that, the red line. I'm going to go here and from a line chart, I'm going to convert it to column. So I just want columns to represent the actual values. And if I don't want the red color, I can go ahead and select whatever color I want it to be. So let's say that's gonna be this blue color. Now for the second one, which is the budgeted number, I'm going to move it from the column type to a stepped area type. And that will be kind of this like line that's a little more transparent in a back. So we can see now when we do the stepped area chart that for example in 2017 the uh, actual budgeted number was below the actual number which is the actual is the actual bar and the budgeted is this kind of line that we have here. Now you can make this obviously look a little different by going here you can change how thick that line is you can change the type of the line. You can change the color of it to whatever it needs to be. And you can also make it more or less transparent, whatever you feel is more appropriate. You can also type your own numbers here. So you can do like 20%. So that would be a nice representation of our data over time. Now we may want to have 2017 in the end instead of having it in the beginning. We're going to have to sort our data. So I'm going to go ahead and select this data. 
sort range it has headers so I'm gonna select by year and I want the latest year all the way down so I'm gonna do A through Z and that will be our actual versus budgeted over time so the blue ones represent the actual amount spent and the budgeted is this transparent line that goes there I probably didn't do a very good job choosing these colors but other than that that should make the point. So that's our actual versus budgeted using a combination chart. That's a combo chart. Moving on to another example, I'm going to go to the sales reps. So we have our sales reps, we have their total sales amounts. And what I want to do, let me zoom out a little bit, that was good. I want to just show the average line for everybody and I want to see who makes more than average in sales and who makes less than average. So I'll go ahead and type average. And here I'll do equals average. And pick everybody in this list. If I'm planning to add more, then I'll probably remove this part. Close that. And that's my average. Before I hit enter, I'm planning to drag this down. So I'm going to press F4 to lock it. And that should be my average. So now I can drag this down. Okay, so that's our average. So with this, let's make this pretty. Make it the same formatting. I can go ahead and make a combo chart. So this is that average values and we're just repeating it. So I'll go ahead and insert chart. And now I'm going to move this to a combo chart. And the red line is our average line. And we can see who's above and who's below the average line. So I'm going to go ahead and delete this. And I'm going to make this a little more interesting. So what I will do in addition to the average, I'm going to add two new lines. First of all, I want to calculate average deviation. So what's average deviation? So if we do AVDV, and I'll do for all of these, I'll F4 to lock it again, close. That's our average deviation. And what's the average deviation? It's average distance from the average. Now, you could do this with standard deviation as well, depending on what you're going for. For this particular example, I like average deviation probably a little better, but you could use standard deviation. Now, what I'm going to do with this average deviation, I'm going to add this value to the average and I'm going to remove it to the average to get positive range of sales. Uh, you'll see what I'm talking about in a second. So what I'll do, I'll call this average deviation plus and I'll copy this and paste this and I'll do another average deviation minus. And here, for now, I'll just copy this to the right. So it's the same thing all over again. And what I will do here, I will take this average and I'll add plus that average deviation to it. And for this one, I'm going to do exactly the opposite. I'm going to take the average and I'm going to subtract that average deviation and that will kind of give me the range of good performance now I'm gonna go ahead and create a chart out of this insert chart so all of these things come up so first I'm gonna move this from stacked to combo chart. So lucky for me, it went ahead and picked lines for all the three uh, series that I had. But if it did not, sales, I would click on sales value and make sure it's columns. 
I would click on the second one and move it to line and line again, right? If I wanted lines. I'm probably not going to keep lines for this, but we'll see. So now if you're between this yellow line and between this green line, then you're doing okay. And this red line is our average. So if you're below the green line, then it's probably not in best range. I want to have this area that's kind of the good area between these two lines be in certain color, like shaded, so it shows like that's the good range. So for that, I'm going to switch some of, or all of these things to a different type of chart. So I'm gonna click on this first line, which is the average deviation minus line, green one. And I'm gonna move it from a line to an area chart. And that's gonna color this area below in green. Now, what I'm gonna do, I'm going to, well, I'm gonna keep it at that for now. Then I'm gonna go to this red one, which is our average line, and I'm gonna just make it as a dashed line. So that's gonna be our line of average in the middle. If I want it a little less thicker, like one pixel line, that's fine too. Maybe we'll move it to a different color. So that's our average line. This yellow one on top, I'm gonna click on it and move it to an area as well. And that's gonna kind of shade that area on top. And I'm gonna choose a color for it. I'll, since this is gonna be like the positive range, I'm gonna give it sort of like a green color. And as a line, I, I really don't know if I want those lines on top and below. I probably don't want them at all. So I'm just gonna go ahead and do a line thickness of, see, I could do one or I can just do zero to remove that line completely on top. And for this one below that we have, this range below, again, I'm gonna click in there. That's gonna be our average deviation minus. I'm also going to remove that line. So I'll do zero pixel for the line. And the color, I'm gonna just make it white. And if I make it white, well, I have to also change the opacity to well, not zero by 100%. And that should make it white. So I have to click away from it because if it's selected, it's gray. But if I click away from it, see, it looks white. And you can't see it, so it seems like there's nothing in there. So now we can see that this green area is the positive area. And this line indicates, which is the average line, is our average line. So if you wanted it thicker or a different color, you could obviously change that and make that happen whatever that line is supposed to be. So maybe we'll do it like a darker green or something like that. Now, the only thing I want to change at this point about this chart, I want to, first of all, I'm gonna get rid of this thing, the legend. I'm gonna click on it and position none. And it would be nice if this green seed goes up to here, up to half of the bar. So it would be nice if it went further than the bars, so all the bars are within that green area. And for that, I'm gonna trick this to make it work. So I'm gonna move this here. I'm gonna go here and insert a new row above this data set. And then I'm gonna move this one more above. And then below, I'm also gonna move one below this. These lines are the ones that build that inner area. So I, you can see how it automatically updated one side, but it didn't update the right side of it. I'll have to go check how we can make that happen as well. So you can see how the data range went through A1 through E14 and E14 is here. We want it to be E15. So let's update that. And with this update, you can see how that green went further to the right. So now we have the area where 
it's the best performance area, and then we have the average line, and we also have the rest of our chart, and that's another example of creating a combo chart. So obviously we would go here and rename this and make it more appropriate so uh, you explain what this chart is actually doing. So that's hopefully a few different examples of combo chart and it gives you a good preview how you can apply them. Hopefully you've enjoyed this video. Please subscribe and I'll see you in the next one.